you freaked out, you went to the store, you were supposed to buy butter and toilet paper or something, <laughs> and instead you bought a whole bunch of chickens. And I'm not mad at you. When I was a little girl, I wanted to save the world. When that didn't happen, I decided to create my own world where things changed for the better every single day. Welcome to Chickenlandia. Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia. I am a backyard chicken educator here in the Pacific Northwest, but you can call me the president of Chickenlandia. So I feel like right now there's a lot of people that have just gotten chickens. They kind of jumped into it because it's like, there's this feeling of like, it's now or never right now. And I totally understand that. I know that if you're one of those people, you might be getting some flack from your friends, from your family, from other chicken people online. But you know, if we know one thing in Chickenlandia, it's that haters have got to hate. <laughs> You know what? Let them say what they're gonna say. I feel really good and excited that you just got chickens. And in fact, I just did a video, or I tried to shoot a video the other day that was called Chickens Are the New Dog. So I was filming this video and it was all about how chickens can be just as awesome as dogs. And I know because I have five dogs, <laughs> I consider myself an expert in the area of chicken dog comparison. So I was shooting this video and I thought it would be really funny and cute if I put a chicken on a leash and took that chicken for a walk like you would a dog. Well, it turns out chickens don't really like being on leashes. <laughs> My chicken hated it. So I kind of scrapped the idea for that video because I don't like to do things to chickens that they don't like. It was fun while it lasted. <laughs> She doesn't like it, so we're not gonna make her do it, right? I've been teaching chicken classes for a long time, so I get to meet a lot of people that are at the beginning of their chicken keeping journey. And one thing that I have seen so many times is people who got chickens and they were like, okay, I'm just getting them for eggs. They are going to be put to work and that's what my chickens are gonna do. And then like six months later, every single chicken has a name <laughs> and they're completely attached to their chickens and treating them like pets. And I've seen that so many times and I absolutely love that. Of course, I love, I love it when people have chickens, even if they do just have them for livestock or eggs or whatever, that's less chickens in a factory farm, which is 100% what we need, less chickens in factory farms. What are you doing in there? So there's just a few things that I really like new chicken keepers to know and understand. And one of the most important things that I really want you to grasp is that people have really strong opinions when it comes to how you should raise your chickens. Let's say you just put a nice bunch of clean straw in your new chicken coop and you go on to social media and you say, oh, I just, I put a whole bunch of straw in my chicken coop. There's gonna be people that might say, you know, straw is bad and you should have put sand in there or you should have used shavings. Or if you put sand in there, there'll be people that say, sand is too cold and you need to use straw <laughs> or whatever. What are you doing, Marshmallow? This is one of the things that I actually find is really unfortunate because I believe that chickens are humankind's most amazing common denominator. And that's what I talk about all the time. Chickens have been domesticated for millennia. Chicken coops, bedding, even feed, man-made roosts. All these things are relatively new when you think about how long we've had this symbiotic relationship with chickens. So in reality, there are people raising chickens in so many different and interesting ways all over the world. There's a lot of different ways, and as long as you aren't hurting your chickens, it's cool with me. Another thing that I think is important that people don't always consider 
is that chickens actually live a pretty long time. I had a chicken last year that died. She spent her most of her life here in Chickenlandia. She was 11 years old. <laughs> so I just want you to have a plan for what you're gonna do with your older hens that aren't really laying anymore. Chickens have a laying life and they have their actual life. And their laying life is shorter than their actual life. So you may be having chickens that aren't really giving you any eggs. And if that's a problem for you, you need to come up with a plan of what you are going to do when your chickens reach henopause. <laughs> All right, another really, really important thing that you need to know, and it might be too late for you if you went out and already bought baby chicks, but uh, you can start preparing now. Roosters happen. It's not 100% guaranteed that you'll get all hens. You might get a rooster, even if you're not choosing straight run chicks. So I still want you to have a plan about what you can do if you do get a rooster and you're not allowed to have a rooster where you live. Find a nice vegan friend that lives out in the country. <laughs> I mean, there's any number of things that you can do. As long as it's humane, I'm cool with it and I understand. Even if you don't have a rooster, hens can be loud. <laughs> Now, I know there's a lot of videos out there that say, you know, the, this is the quietest breed of chicken. This chicken isn't gonna bug your neighbors. There could be a super loud chicken that's supposed to be quiet according to its breed. And it's like singing the egg song all day long or <laughs> just like clucking really loud and making funny noises for an hour. What are you talking about? If I were you, I would go and talk to your neighbors first and say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about getting chickens. Or maybe if you have baby chicks, you go over there and say, hey, you know what? I got baby chicks. I just want to let you know that this is happening. And if there's any problem, please talk to me about it. And then when those chickens start laying, you take some eggs to your neighbors. <laughs> There are definitely some important things that you're gonna wanna know about roosts, about nesting boxes, about how to optimize your coop so that it's easy to clean, which is so important. What I want you to do to get all that information is click this video right here. It's all about what you need to know before you build your chicken coop or buy a chicken coop. And as always, it's 100% friendly education and entertainment. And I know you're gonna love it.